Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the fifth lecture of design and analysis of experiment. Today we will discuss data summary and presentation. The content of today's presentation is experiment, population and sample, sample and sample statistics, histogram, box plot and some other uh, some other measures like median, mode, quartile, interquartile range, all those things. So, let us start uh, from where we ended in last class. Last class I explained that, so there is a, there is our process model. So, in the process there will be input, there will be controllable factors, there will be uncontrollable factors and then there is response variable y and we are interested to know the behavior of y. So, <clears throat> the process can be a physical process, can be a virtual process, can be a manufacturing system, can be a service system, whatever may be. So, <laughs> our, as you, you know the DOE's objectives are to find out why a, a, the behavior of y the behavior of y, this is the first and important, important um, objective that behavior of y, y means the response variable. So, when we conduct experiment, we get data on y, apart from uh, the information related to x, z and inputs. For example, in this study, that engineer is studying the method for improving the ability to detect target on radar scope, what I have explained in the last class. So, you see that here the response variable y is the intensity level, level at detection. Suppose, we were interested to see the behavior of intensity level based on experimental data. The sole purpose of doing this experiment is to, is to uh, analyze it and based on analysis you have to infer about the radar scope, radar scope behavior in general when um, in general in the sense at the system at the process level. So, in statistics uh, the, there is important concept called population. So, and its equivalence in practice we can say that system or process, system oblique process. Population means the entirety, the entirety or whole, whole or entirety and in system means the system within a particular boundary that boundary will be space boundary or and or time boundary. So, that means, if we consider the radar scope example, here what happened? The space is that we are interested in the behavior of the or the performance of the radar scope, uh, radar scope given, given ground color clutter and type of filter used and also uh, in the presence of different level of operators. And what is the time? Time is that okay, maybe we will conduct certain experiment like the 24 number of experiments we have conducted. In that case, when the when the time is such a short, it will not represent the population. The system will not represent the population. Suppose if I consider the entire lifespan of the system or the process then we, we, we will get or we can do that lakhs of millions of such experiments or in real life 
what happened that the in, the in the entire entire life cycle of the process of the system uh, that there there will be uh, billions of uses or millions of items will be produced so all those taken together will will represent the population so when we talk about population the another uh, the important thing relates to population is there that population with respect to certain characteristics these characteristics usually the y the response variable and we have seen here in this case the intensity level at detection these characteristics can be summarized in terms of parameters in terms of parameters so what are those parameters parameters can be the mean and standard deviation standard deviation sigma but as we <laughs> there may be many more param more parameters but as we know that we cannot wait for observations of the entire span of the system or infinite countable infinite number of items to be produced what we 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 basically we basically do we do experiment or we collect data uh, in in our case it is the experimental data so that means we have such population and from here we get certain 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 representative number of observation that is the sample and this sample we this sample here in our case what the experiment we conducted that is this experiment is give gives us some data this data this data represent or constitute the sample so population followed by sample this is another another important concept population is characterized by parameters and sample is characterized by statistics so if i say the population parameter is mu then the st sample statistics will be the sample average y bar because y is the variable of interest if i say population parameter is sigma square then sample statistics corresponding sample statistics is s square with the sample variance okay so <coughs> the population variable y it ha it, it it has central tendencies central tendencies it has dispersions also by central tendencies we mean mean median mode then your quartile usually there may be percentile quantile others by dispersion we mean that that what the the deviation from the target uh, target deviation from that is basically deviation deviation from target if it is deviation from the mean then it can be it is known as variance square root of variance is standard deviation so what we will see with the uh, today that can uh, can we get some measure of the central tendencies or the deviation of the variable or response variable y or the random variable of interest to y so in order to know all those things you can have conducted experiment and you got a sample now you you compute corresponding uh, that uh, that sample sample estimates like for mean y bar for standard deviation variance s square similarly uh, the, the 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 data the median median value the mode value the quartile value and all those things so uh, the another way of presenting or summarizing the data is through through graphs plots so there are many ways but for most important one is histogram because it will give us the idea that what will be the tentative distribution of this response variable y another one is box plot this this also this gives us that what is the central tendency as well as the 
a dispersion in the data from one plot. So, these few things we will be describing within half an hour of time. So, population can be finite and it can be infinite. Finite means it is countable with size n, infinite means size infinite. So, if you want to get a finite population, you do sampling without replacement and if you want to get infinite population, you do sampling with replacement. By, by without replacement, we mean that suppose you consider a container with red and white balls and you have certain parameters to measure like this that what is the proportion of white uh, ball in, in, in this container. So, then what you do? You pick up one ball and then keep uh, pick up one ball and keep in this container. Then again and, and, and see that what color it is. Again you pick up another one, see color it is and if you do for substantial number of uh, times what will happen? You will get some white and black ball and then you find out the proportion. So, this is without replacement and as a result what happened number of balls in the main container will be reduced and uh, if you continue doing this for a, for a sufficiently large amount of time there will be no ball remaining in this container that is sample finite one because there is no other observation or item to be measured. In the second case you are doing the same thing, but you are replacing this as a result what is happening? the number of balls in the container remain constant all through. So, you, you can do infinite number of uh, get infinite number of observations. So, as I told you population is characterized by mean standard deviation these are these are the parameters of the population and and we basically infer, uh, infer uh, these population parameters from sample and in our case this sample is coming through experimental data. So, experimental data is constituting the sample. Here I want to tell you one more thing that here there although the controllable factors are there and we have seen that ground clutter as well as uh, the type of filter uh, contributes or effect in, in the in why the response variable. But in this case we are not considering all those ground clutter and type of filter x and x variables. Just for the sake of presentation here, just we are only considering y values, we are assuming that these what we observe from the experimental data. Because if we bring those x that con control variable, so we have we have to have some ad additional information and accordingly the we require uh, some different way of analyzing, maybe may be co uh, computing statistics for uh, different levels of ground clutter, different levels of filter. Okay. okay, the sense of to, uh, the presentation now is that uh, suppose given a data, you got an experimental data set, now how to compute mean, standard deviation, variance and how to go for different kind of plots. So, let us <coughs> see that there are 24 observations and if as you have 24 observations, so in general the data structure will be like this, sample data structure will be like this i i or j, let us i start from i 1, 2, 3 like i, suppose there will be n number of observation in this experiment n equal to 24. Then you have y values which are basically y i, so y 1, y 2, y 3, so like this y i then y n, this number of observation is there. This is what is your sample here. Now, you want to compute the sample average, sample average sample average you can compute like this using this formula 1 by n i equal to 1 to n y i. That means, you take sum of all those values and sum of all those values for this given example and when you divide by 24 that is the number of observations, then you will get sample average y bar equal to 95.333. So, <coughs> what does it mean? We say that if we plot suppose this is our my y which is the intensity level intensity level and this is the minimum value and this may be the maximum value then average minimum value for this example is 80 maximum value 104. So, 95.33 it will be somewhere uh, 1915 may be somewhere here. 
So, this is the location, this is a location, this represent the location in the on the data stream. So, that is this is average. Okay. Now, let us consider that uh, the what will be the what will be the median of the data set. That means, I have y 1 to y n data, what you do? You, you find out y within bracket i, this is the ordered data. Ordered data means from minimum to maximum. So, minimum is 80, maximum is 114 and in between the data set will be there. Okay. Just I want to show you this data uh, here, here you see this is the ordered data 80, 81, 83, 84, 86 like this and then this. So, what you want to know? You want to divide it into two halves 50 percent left and 50 percent right. So, what you do? You first you find out n, then you find out n plus 1 by 2th position. So, as n equal to 24, so 25 by 2 it is 12.5 position. So, if I say this is my first position and this is my 24th position, so somewhere here somewhere here it will be it will be 20 this is 25.33. So, somewhere he, here what will happen uh, somewhere here may be this is the position of median because this is the 12.5 position 12.5 position median. So, how do you compute this what is the value? So, so what do you require you find out that 12.5 this position is not it is a count uh, count type of data you are not getting that 12.5 you are getting at the 12th position data value is y value is 95 and 13th position 96 you take the average of the two so 95 plus 96 by 2 it is 95.5 so the median value is 95.5 okay now you may be interested to know the quartile that means by doing median you are dividing the data stream into two halves by making quartile you are you are basically finding out the four four parts this one is known as first quartile this will be known as third quartile and median is your second quartile so if median is n by 12th position data then first quartile will be n plus 1 by 4th position data so this is 12.5 by 2 so it will be 6.2 Two five this position, and similarly this will be uh, that uh, six eight twelve point five plus six eighteen point seven five this fifth position. What do you require? You, you have to go to the data and see that what is the six point two five position. So one two three four five six six position is ninety and seventh position is ninety. In between whatever data is there that will be ninety. So first quartile is ninety. Second quartile we found 95.5. Now, what will be the third quartile? Third quartile will be the 18, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. This is 100 and 19th uh, position is 102. So, that means what happened? Your, your L will be 100 plus 102 minus 100 by, by what happened? 4 into 3. The reason is it is 0.75. 3 by 4 this position. So, this value the third quartile value this value will come around 101.50. Okay. Another one is mode, mode is basically now suppose you, you just see that the data which, which data set is occurring the maximum amount of time. So, if we see the this data 90 occurring twice, 92 occurring twice, then 96 twice, then, uh, then okay, these three occurring twice, all other ones. So, then it is more uh, maximum frequency is 2 and there are 90, 92 and 96. So, that means multimodal case, three modes. But as the data set is very small, so um, okay, whatever may be there, fine. So, I, this is what is mode. So, that means essentially what you now know, you know the given a data set how to compute mean, 
given a data set how to find out median, given data set how to find out quartile, given data set how to find out mode, all those things you know. Now, quartile means you are dividing the data into four parts and as a result first quartile, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile and fourth quartile q 1, q 2 and q 3. So, this q 1 minus q 3 is known as i q or inter quartile range is q 3 minus q 1 this is known as inter quartile range. So, given the given this data as we know that the quartile values are q 3 is 101.50 and q 1 is 90. So, that means inter quartile range is 11.50. Okay, I hope that given data you will be able to compute all those things. So, now, <coughs> now we will discuss about dispersion. As I showed you, dispersion means about this is my data. Suppose you consider any central tendency, for example, let the mean value is here mu. Now, we want to know, we want to know how the data spray, spray data spread spread. Uh, left to right with reference to this. So, this is known as dispersion. Now, it can be mu, can be any other target value also. The measure of dispersion is variance and whose and standard deviation. Standard deviation is actually the measure of dispersion and which is basically standard deviation is basically square root of variance. So, how to compute the variance? Variance of y from the sample it will be 1 by n minus 1 sum total y i minus y bar square i equal to 1 to n. In our example, n is 24. So, 24 minus 1 i equal to 1 to 24 and y i values are known and y bar value we computed. What is the y bar value? y bar value we have not computed. Some value will be there y bar. So, y bar value I think 95.333. So, this square you put all the 24 observed values here and subtract it from the mean and what you get that will be your standard uh, that will be your variance. We are saying that V of y which we basically define in terms of a square sample variance a square and if you use this formula you will get it 86.319. Then standard deviation is standard deviation equal to square root of 86.319 which is 9.291. Okay. So, apart from variance and standard deviation the other measure of dispersion is range that is max value minus mean value IQR interquartile range that is Q 3 minus Q 1. There is mean absolute deviation MAD mean absolute deviation from the, uh, the deviation from mean of square you just find out mean absolute deviation that means mean of uh, this this one mean of this that square will not be there that absolute value whatever value you got this one also another measure of this. So, in DOE design analysis experiment we will be primarily concerned with mean with respect to population it is mu, with respect to sample it is y bar. So, mean population and sample. We will be interested to know the standard deviation. So, with respect to population we say it is sigma and here we say it is s. We will be interested to know variance with respect to population is sigma square and with respect to sample it is s square. So, please keep in mind these population, these are population parameters, population parameters are constant and unknown and these are the sample statistics, sample statistics are known and random, known and random. The sample statistics are used to estimate the population parameter, sample statistics used to estimate population parameters. As population parameters are not known, so we require an estimation of that. Where population parameter uh, parameters are known, I do not think the statistics is useful there. Okay. 
now i i will i'll tell you some graphical plots first one is histogram you see this data set this data set and this is the histogram it is it is basically drawn in minita so what is the procedure of drawing an histogram first one is you have data suppose data y here it is 20 y1 to y2 to y24 actually i will write yn so what do you do you arrange them ascending order them you find out order data so instead of if i write yi is the data order data we can write y within bracket i so that mean it will be y bracket 1 y2 and like yn remember these data and these data are not same these are y1 is not y within bracket 1 this this may be some value here it is 80 and in it is 104 for the order case but for the unordered un case it is different it it may be it may be something else yn value okay whatever it is order the data then find out the find out the number of class or number of classes or beams mean what do you want actually when you develop histogram so instead or uh, you have it is your y axis so instead of taking considering one every data point one after another you basically you know the mean and max you want to make it some equal intervals a large number of interval like this 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 and you want to find out suppose this is a value you choose a choose a low, the lowest value and higher value and this is known as first class so this is this is my class 1 or bin 1 this is bin 2 bin 3 like this and every class has the lower boundary and upper boundary and then you what you required to do you see select class for example in this case we may select that 77.5 to 80 maybe my or 82.5 that means 72.5 to 82.5 that means difference is 5 so this what is the number of what is the frequency how many how many data points falls under this let it be n1 then 82.5 to 87.5 let it be n2 like this so first what you will find out the class so you use root n you, if n is 24 it it will be around 5 it is it is just a uh, just a trial and it's just a uh, what i can say guess it's a it's a starting point you may not be happy with uh, 55 you may go for uh, some other values also but whatever may be the thing you have class you find out all the class uh, all the class and their lower and upper bound boundary and then in each class what is the frequency so this side will be frequency so what you do basically here suppose this my first class so you you plot the frequency and draw a bar like this for the second class suppose this is the frequency draw like this third one may be like this fourth one may be like this fifth one may be like this so <clears throat> so that mean x axis the y value y axis is the frequency sometimes what happen you you will use relative frequency means suppose you have total n number of observations so n1 by n is the proportion n2 by n is the proportion this set also relative frequency also you can use so if you use relative frequency that is that that is also histogram many a times what we do we basically join the middle point of the bar and and find out a and find out a uh, a graph this is known as frequency polygon and if you smoothen this frequency polygon you will get the get a get some idea about the distribution of the y variable okay so with reference to this data this is what is the histogram and it is developed using many tab you see that the few things that this is the middle value 80 so this 77.5 82.5 so like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 eight bins or eight class and there are class interval but all are equal interval and all the 
<coughs> all the middle points this point this point this point if you join you get poly, poly frequency polygon but here happened that this this frequency polygon is moving further and you got a got a curve like this which is it is resembling that the data may have may be normally distributed okay <coughs> here you see that uh, the minitab also given like this mean standard deviation variance skewness kurtosis so these are other measures of uh, this uh, plot skewness means how what is the is it symmetric or it is tail to left or tail to right that is basically skewness kurtosis means basically it talks about the fickleness of the uh, value means is the is the is the mode value is very uh, the, what is the uh, the mode uh, whether the number of observations at the mode level is very high uh, compared to the other levels or it is basically uh, it is a smooth and one okay not that much of high fickleness so those things are coming through kurtosis okay but uh, here another important uh, plot is shown here you see that down this is known as box plot so i want to show you how this box plot is developed because it is a very important plot for all of us now in order to draw box plot what you required to do the steps are given here but you required to find out all the quartiles that is q1 q2 q3 i already told you how to uh, draw q1 q2 q3 so that mean this is my data axis y so i know that this is my q1 and this one may be your q3 suppose this is q1 and this one is q3 so what do you do you develop a box here q1 and q3 with certain width so this is known as box then you also plot the median value there so maybe median is somewhere here let the median is here this is q2 you may plot mean value also just like a small circle you can plot mean mean also but usually we do not do not put mean here we put all q1 q2 q3 then you find out what is the value q1 minus 1.5 times iqr iqr already you have seen iqr is the difference between q3 and q1 then this is first quartile uh, minus 1.5 iqr similarly this this one this may be uh, that q3 plus 1.5 iqr so my my box or the in the box plot this on not only box there is some another line that spray line left to q1 and right to q3 these are known as whiskers whiskers that's why this plot is also known as box and whiskers plot whisker plot box and whisker plot so here some of the steps are given so you see that we said that first find q2 then find q2 left to uh, q, q, left to uh, left to q2 data set that is q1 and find q3 then find the extreme values it may so happen that that there will be some values here some values here also so these are known as extreme values means the values of y values which are beyond q1 minus 1.5 iqr or here below this value or above q3 plus 1.5 iqr these are extreme values these are known as outliers so usually we do not consider this this doesn't belong to the data the advantage of having box plot is that it not only tells you that where the median lies it also give you that where the where the most of the data data um, fall most of the data fall on which range because this iqr this is the range where most of the data falls and it also give you that what is the spread this side and this and the variability beyond that also so as mean can be uh, mean can be placed here also 
if we place mean this will give you the location mean and median quartile this will give you the dispersion that is the spread of the data set from one plot you are getting central tendency and the and the spread of the dispersion in the data so it's a very important plot and in fact when we do when we conduct experiment all the time what we will do after uh, getting the experimental data we will go for box plot to see that whether the factors level is really affecting the mean of the response variable or not. So, that one diagram I will show you now. You see that <coughs> last lecture uh, in with one factor uh, complete randomized design we found that the ground clutter has three levels and in each level there are eight number of replications or data points. Now, and what we have done here, we have developed three box plots, one for y that is the response the detection level when ground clutter is at low level, one for y when ground clutter is medium level and another for high when ground clutter is high level. So, you see what happened here if I develop box plot for first one, second one and third one with, refer with reference to the ground clutter, low, medium and high and this is the this is the box plot. What can you infer from this box plot? You can simply infer that that the median value here and the other two they are different here median is lower than these two hmm, for this low and this value is around just above 90. Here it is above 95. If I consider mean, mean will be somewhere here, here mean will be somewhere here, mean will be somewhere here. So, that means if you change the glitter ground, uh, if you when you uh, use the radar scope, when the uh, that environment condition in terms of ground clutter it is low, you will detect it quickly because the signal detection level is lower. If ground clutter is high, you will your, your mean detection time will be more. This is one. Second interesting phenomena is there the variability which is represented by the box length of the box. See when ground clutter is at low level, this length is this is smaller compared to medium ground clutter level compared to high ground clutter level. So that means if if the environment this ground clutter environment condition the ground clutter level is high it means that not only the mean response time is high in addition the variability is also high that means suppose you are using the radar scope when you detect the target if i go and use the radar scope i will take maybe time much different than uh, then for both of us when the uh, ground clutter level is at low level that is the one level so from this plot we can say that there is difference but whether this difference is significant or not, statistically significant or not, this will be uh, I can say um, tested uh, by some by some techniques. Uh, uh, we will we will we will we'll discuss analysis of variance. That time I will show you how this will be uh, tested. Whether the mean response for the three ground clutter level different or not. If it is different, which of the pairs are different, all those things will be tested. So, with this I, con I conclude that when you have data, you must know how to represent the data in simple tools like box plot, like histogram, there are pie chart, bar chart, other things are also there, Pareto chart. And also you must know that what is, what is the tendency of the data in terms of central tendency that is mean, median, mode, quartile all those things. Also you must know what is the spread of the data. Depending on the sample size, this, this tendencies or spread can be thought of representing the population central tendency and population spread. So, whether they are really representing population level information or not that will be that will be done through different kind of testing later on. So, for the time being I, I, I again tell that uh, those all those whatever things I have uh, given to you these are taken from uh, different uh, 
uh, available books and some um, available videos like here I have used Montgomery design analysis of experiment, engineering statistics by Montgomery, Ranja Rubli and applied multivariate statistics video lecture of mine. Thank you very much. Thanks.